Hey guys, I uh, thought it'd pop on with a bit here. Looks like things are getting pretty tenuous, in my humble opinion. Worth a video anyway. I thought this was interesting though. Here, look at this. They got uh, all these posts on all these sites saying that they're still up because the information is critical even during government shutdown. Anyway, this is all your. Uh, Stuff coming from ISWA simulations from the satellites around the Earth in geosynchronous orbit. It goes 13 and 14, and I think the 15 as well. The reason I'm making a vid is we're in a major squeeze play again. Look here. The uh, bow shocks being pushed way down to seven Earth radii, getting real close to the geosynchronous satellite level. And in the back, if you'll notice, it's getting pushed from behind by Nemesis, even below the geosynchronous satellite. If you watch these things while we make this video, you can see the false bow shock back here and see if it doesn't get pushed in behind this uh, dotted line. I'm not sure if it does or not, but you can see there's a whole lot of energy bleed coming in through the back side, primarily right down the middle, which is what I've been showing you on here with Nemesis trying to make inroads down the middle. And the magnetosphere is still pretty weak, it looks like to me. See all these interplanetary magnetic field lines? That's Nemesis. And look how strong they're getting in. Seems like they're pretty much like we're in like sort of like a Faraday cage, if you will. If you can picture that's just for illustration purposes. Not exactly what is physically occurring. However, it's kind of what it looks like to me. We're like in a cage. These interplanetary magnetic field lines from Nemesis are looking pretty strong. The blue ones, CIMF, blue interplanetary magnetic field lines. These are the polar cap, the black ones. Normally we have quite several of them streaming away from the planet and directing all this energy coming from our sun. But now that we have this big planet out in front, which is accelerating all the sun energy, and I'm going to show you why I think that's to be the case. It's helping to compress the magnetosphere even further. So we'll just run this through real quick. Just look at all these activity going on. It's freaking crazy. And the field lines are staying pretty weak in my opinion. They got strong there. I think they garnered some energy from this planet out in front. And they got strong and then they're going weak again. And there's a couple of spots of missing time, just I think 30 second increments here and there. But, um, wow. I mean, look at that. I've never seen it quite like that before. That's a 12280109. Let's see what it looks like on here. Eh, doesn't look particularly crazy here, but let me pull this through for you. See what I'm talking about? I'm getting a lot of compression on the front side, and then this here, this is all backside compression. And the magnetopause getting whacked around. Look at that. Big influx of energy there on the back side. And man, I mean, it's getting close. And there you see the magnetopause getting all squirreled around. Now, there's missing time there, I think. And yeah, see, it went from 817 to. 819 to 848. That's when we had an expulsion. 
highest solar wind speed 763 that I saw on this run. Remember, that's from Nemesis. This is all being recorded by these geosynchronous satellites inside the Earth's magnetopause or magnetosphere area. <coughs> it's not coming from the sun. Although the solar wind speed from the sun is up. Let's look at 848. What it looks like on here. Okay, that's when it made the expulsion. There's 819, got the chevron, so things are getting pretty much in flux. 819, that's when things are getting crazy, I think, when these chevrons come up. And there's the uh, magnetopause getting all scrambled. And then we have the 30, 29 seconds of missing time, 39 seconds, 29, something like, yeah, about 30 seconds. And that's when we make the expulsion. There it is there. So let's look at this. This is the velocity. And these are these are all data coming from uh, those geosynchronous satellites I showed you. This is the last like three to four hour run. This is the Y cut looking straight across. From the if you're standing uh, beside the planet, the equatorial plane, it's like a cut plane within the magnetosphere, magnetopause, showing you what it looks like from this computer simulation. And then here's the Z cut looking straight down on the planet. So you can see the solar wind speed, even out in front, is pretty high, and also in the back, pretty high. So we're in pretty much of a squeeze play. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the density. When it's dark, that means the density's way up. So you can see we got a lot of density all around the Earth, front and back. And then this really tells the tale pressure. Look at this pressure. And look how the pressure's coming way in, like I showed you on. Uh, the uh, ISWA, you can see how it's coming way in from the back. That's why I say we're in a squeeze play. See that pressure? So here's the Enlil. This was the prediction for today based upon, uh, basically it's from the data they collect from our sun. They're not factoring in Nemesis or that big planet out Run, I'm quite sure. So here's what they projected for plasma density for today. Here's the 28th. And it's pretty low, down around 5. Okay. It's supposed to be measured around the Earth. And then this a measurements projected around stereo AMB, the uh, L4 and L5 Lagrange point. And then the radial velocity, they have that projected up close to 500. But the actual readings are quite a bit higher, especially on the density. And the connection with the phi angle, remember a zero degree phi angle would mean a direct Earth to Sun connect, and a 180 degree phi angle is a Sun to the Earth connect. So anything above 180 is coming from, we're connecting with something behind the Sun behind the earth rather I'm sorry so as you can see here we had a string right along there I'll put the hours up this is the last 24 hours so basically we've been running a pretty steady connection from the Sun to the earth or from the Sun to the big planet to the earth then to nemesis nemesis is definitely in the picture I mean it has to be just look at all that space weather and the wind speed so I told you they projected it around 500 you see how it's above 500 starting at around ooh, around 0600 UTC 0700 UTC <clears throat> and what I think is happening and the density is quite a bit higher than they projected 
it was about double anyway. What I think is happening is uh, we're getting that direct connect with Nemesis through the Earth, through the big planet, to the Sun, or vice versa. Probably versa with the Sun in the picture as being the primary connector because then it's helping to pull and to accelerate all this stuff coming from the Sun. That's my hypothesis. And I. And I think it's. I don't see any other explanation, to be honest. So here's the Fock radiation belts. And then we'll get back to. Uh, we'll pull this through for you one more time. So you can see all the field lines stacking up in front. They're coming from the big planet. Wow, so we had some kind of a a blast there. Seven fifty seven. Seven forty five. <coughs> okay, well that's right around when all this was happening. And the magnetopause is getting all squirreled around, so we're getting all kind of pressure coming from the front. That big planet slinging stuff our way from the uh, sun, the solar density and the wind speed. And then, of course, Nemesis is pushing from the back, so that's causing this bow shock to get all distorted like it is. And then you can see there's the There's some missing time in there, 8.17 to 8.48. So there's another 30 seconds. Those are the two spots I noticed where we had missing time. So we're in a pretty uh, volatile situation right now, in my humble opinion. With what's going on. I'll pull this one through for you. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was to start to shut down again. There's a missing time there. See, it goes from uh, 01. Then he always give you like one other minute. See how the chevrons are there? So you can see it's a volatile situation. Then it goes to 02. Then it goes to 21. So there's another 21 seconds of missing time. Look at uh, we're getting super a lot of energy there. Oh, let me see what else I got up here. Oh yeah, okay, here's the solar ham. Just to reiterate. And the link's in the description box. This will give you the uh, explanation of what that blue phi angle is. Like I said, zero degrees, it's pointing, indicates it connection from the earth to the sun and if it's at 180 it's sun to the earth here's the last six hours on ace you can see it's been fluctuating quite a bit i was starting at 0900 it was about a sun then it went up to a little above so that's nemesis dominant connection but then like i showed you it's been running around 180 so i think that's why we're getting all this extra pressure <clears throat> on the front of our bow shock and then we got the pressure from behind so we're in a definite major squeeze play here guys in my humble opinion so I got these synced all up these three are synced and these two are synced I'll just let them play through and I got about 30 seconds left on this video so I'll let you see what what they're doing um, make sure you check the description box out pick up that solar ham space weather tutorial and there's also the Lagrange point one where you can see that the satellite measuring for discover and ace are out there at the uh, 930,000 miles in front of the earth okay running out of time God bless
Peace and I'm out.